Normally when I engage myself in a construction project, I want to build something that's really going to last. But sometimes putting in the amount of time and effort and resources and money in order to make a project that lasts a long time is a waste of those time and effort and resources and money because maybe you don't need it to last that long. This run of stairs behind me, I constructed this just in a couple of hours and it only needs to last one season, but that doesn't mean I want to build a set of stairs that you know is going to be structurally unsound or unsafe. I wanted something structurally sound, safe, that was going to achieve the goal of getting me from the ground up into the firewood shed just for this winter. If you would like to learn some basic construction techniques and ways of thinking about putting lumber together so that it will be structurally sound and safe, this is the video for you. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Not waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Last time I uploaded a video, it was related to making some stone steps that were intended to last generation after generation. They were just really well built, built into the ground, not to, meant to break down or decompose or you know fall apart you know just after a couple of years. If you want to see that video, here's a link to it somewhere up here. Uh, in this video, I'm also going to be working on stairs, but these stairs are not meant to last generations or a decade or even an entire year. These stairs are just intended to be uh, built to last a season. Now, why is this of any use to you and why on earth would I want to build such crappily built stairs? Well, the, the key is, is that they're not going to be crappily built. They're just not going to be very uh, attractive and they're going to be made out of materials that you know aren't going to last year after year, but they are going to be structurally very sound. So if you want to watch a video that kind of gives you the nuts and bolts of how to put something together, uh, I'm just going to throw the whole thing together right in front of you. I don't even know what I'm going to do in my head right now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at some uh, piles of wood that I've got here. And I guess it's like, if you want to think about it in this way, it's like a YouTube challenge. Like, can I turn these piles of trash into some effective, strong stairs that I'll be able to use for this winter? The reason that I need a set of stairs going in uh, to this structure for the winter is this is my firewood shed. In the past, I'd had a much uh, larger pile of cinder blocks there, but I had to pilfer some of the cinder blocks for working on a deck that is in the greenhouse. Later on in this video, I think I'll bring you in there uh, just to kind of show you what we did in there. But I ended up having to pull a bunch of the cinder blocks out of this pile. And at this point, I, you know, it's not a functional stairway anymore. So I need to build something on top of that for just this season because I need to be able to get up into the firewood shed here. And the reason that I'm building this, uh, you know, in a kind of a, you know, I don't want to use the word crappy way, but an unattractive way that's not meant to last a long time. Again, it is going to be super strong and you know we're going to talk about all the fundamentals of how to build a strong structure in this video. But the reason that I'm not wa uh, worrying about whether it's going to look nice or not is that uh, next year, uh, at least the plan is, next year I'm going to build a whole deck that comes off of the firewood shed. You notice that there's, there's two entrances to it. And the idea with this firewood shed is that on one year, let's say, uh, well this year, I'm going to be going through the near entrance. That's where the driest wood is. So I'm going to be going in uh, that side and working my way across to the other side. Now at the end of this burning season, I'll start refilling it from this side, uh, fill it all back up. And you'll imagine any of the wood that I did not uh, finish burning last year is gonna be way over on the far side. That's gonna be the driest wood and the wettest wood will be the stuff that I stacked over on this side. So the following year, I'm gonna be needing to get up into that far door, which is much higher than this one. And I'm gonna be eating in from, uh, from that side uh, and, and then kind of like flip flop it every year. So the, the reason that I'm not building you know, beautiful steps now is because I have to do this whole other project later and I just need something that's going to be safe for getting me into this structure during this winter. I'll show you what I've got kind of going on here and why you can, you can imagine why this isn't that safe. So here are the steps that I've got. There's like a, it's like an eight inch step here and then there's like a four inch step and then this is like, uh, this is eight plus six, so a 14 inch step. And these are kind of, you know, wiggly on the top here. And, uh, and then there's like another, there's another step up into here. And I'm, I'm not just gonna be coming out of this thing, you know, empty handed. I'm gonna be having, uh, you know, a bunch of firewood with me. And the weather out here could be icy or slushy. This could be all covered in ice. I wanna make something really safe. So when I'm coming out of this structure, I don't slip and fall and, you know, break my legs. So that is why I'm building this just for this year. And I want to do it with materials that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be eating into materials that I want to use uh, for other things. 
So I've got a big pile of junk wood here, a big pile of junk wood there, and by junk I just mean stuff that's not particularly attractive. But before we get into that, I want to show you a, the, another project that I did and uh, you know, kind of the plans that I work on. Because I mentioned for this, I don't have any plan in my head. I, I mean, I, I, I kind of know what stairways look like, but I really have to look at the materials that I've got. I want to show you another project that I did recently that is going to give you a sense of how I like to kind of put things together and the extent to which I usually make uh, plans for things. Because oftentimes on this channel, uh, people will ask me if I have, uh, you know, the plans for some structure that I've made. And I will have to tell people I, I really don't because a lot of times I either just have it all in my head or the structure is something that is, um, you know, I did make some kind of a plan for, but it's not particularly, uh, you know, it's not particularly... Uh, uh, well, here, I've got a good example right here. Uh, this is the last uh, carpentry project that I did that I needed a, a some kind of a plan for. Uh, and here's the plan. It's on the back of a Chobani <laughs> yogurt container. And this is the extent of the planning that I usually do. I've got kind of a side view of it here, and I've got the measurements, and I, I made some notes about where all the shelves are going to uh, put it, uh, kind of key in to the structure, and then at the top I made kind of a list of all the materials that I was going to need. So I did this so that I could just make this uh, materials list so that I could quickly uh, generate up the stuff. And I'll show you what I've got uh, going on for this is just, uh, you know, it's just a bunch of one inch boards, and they went together really very simply. So a lot of times I won't really make full plans for things. In fact, uh, one thing that I, I did that uh, required a little bit more planning was actually this floor. And this floor is why I have all of those missing cinder blocks because the floor is being held up. You can see I haven't quite finished it yet. It's being held up by cinder blocks that were set down into the, the gravel here. So, uh, you know, just oftentimes I just won't do a plan for things. One thing I do want to show you is what's going on right here. I'm going to set the camera down and give you a sense of uh, what I created here. I'm pretty pretty proud of the idea of this. Uh, I had an issue where uh, inside of the house we would have uh, you know trash building up, trash and recyclables, and whenever the bins inside the house were filling up, I was just bringing them out into this greenhouse. Uh, and I'll give you a, a kind of a pan around the greenhouse uh, before we leave, but you'll see it's kind of an attractive environment. It's supposed to be kind of an attractive entryway to the house, and uh, you know, both because, you know, I, I don't like guests coming uh, to our house and having just big piles of trash and garbage in the entryway, and also just for ourselves, so I, I, we're not living in that environment. I wanted to create some kind of a solution where I could, you know, keep that stuff, you know, hidden, uh, but in a way that's also convenient. And this is what I came up with. This is a little uh, marine um, handle for uh, setting in, uh, you know, boats and things like that. Uh, and I, I set it into this trap door that we got right here. And uh, this was the last project that I did that had any kind of precision to it, was making sure that this, uh, this trap door could uh, fit really nicely into the, the floor here. And we've got all of our trash and you know, burnable recyclables, and, and I don't need this anymore, so that goes into there. Uh, but you know, this is the kind of thing where, e even with this, I didn't do any kind of a, a diagram or anything like that. I just kind of had it all in my head. So, uh, you know, as long as you understand the fundamentals of kind of how to put things together, you oftentimes don't really need, uh, you know, a full plan or schematic of what you're doing, uh, you know, ahead of time, you know, at least, you know, once you have some, uh, some practice with it. So we're going to close this up. One thing I just want to mention to you guys, uh, this thing is like, this is a killer. Like, if you were in there and this thing fell down, uh, that would be awful. So we've got a little hook right here, and there's a, uh, a piece of, uh, well, there's a, there's a, well, it's an old shoelace. <laughs> that's holding it in there so this thing can't, uh, can't just fall on you. And we had it open specifically in this direction so that it blocks the front door so we could never accidentally leave this thing open and have someone come in the front door and fall into a pit. Although for post-SHTF uh, situations, you know, maybe we want to just remove the whole uh, trap door off the top and put like a bed of spikes in there. Legal disclaimer, I don't actually plan on doing that. <laughs> it's just a joke, but uh, it definitely felt like I was building a trap uh, here when I was putting this together. So put that back down. I'm going to give you guys just a shot of this uh, handle before we leave too, because that, that's kind of neat. Uh, I, I have a rug that goes over this as well, but it, the, the lumber is still drying, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm leaving it uncovered. And we have it down in this position instead of open to dry, because I don't want it to dry warped. I want it to be flat while it's drying. So let's do one quick pan around this environment, which I think is kind of beautiful. Not this section. This section's still being worked on. But you can see over here, it's going to be an attractive environment. We've got the, uh, the boards being cut all along the rocks here. You know, this is kind of a nice, attractive environment to enter. That fan won't be there, ultimately. And, uh, you know, it was just a shame to have it all mucked up with, with trash. 
Here's that marine handle. These are pretty handy for little doors. It, you, they're flush so you can walk right over it and then this thing pops up. I'll put a li little link to, in the description to uh, this particular one that I got because uh, there's a lot of these available uh, and you, know, you never know whether it's a good one or a bad one. Uh, in fact, the, the last set of these that I bought, I uh, bought them and then they got discontinued. Um, so I kind of crossed my fingers and got this. And this one seems this one seems pretty well well made. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick up any of those. I think it was like twelve dollars for for two of them or something like that. The first step is to just figure out what we have for materials. I've got this pile here, which has uh, I mean this board here. It looks pretty good. Let me get I'm going to get the camera off the tripod so it's a little easier to maneuver here. This board here looks pretty good. That's like a one by, or I'm sorry, that's like a two by eight. That could be good for steps. And looking at the length of this thing, it's like I can get one, at least two, possibly three steps out of this thing. We got a little bit of rot back over here, but the rot only goes back to about here, although on the, on the underside, maybe it's worse. Maybe this is the good side and the underside's even worse. So I've got at least two steps there. Uh, made out of uh, made a, made out of that. That would totally do fine. What do we got under this boat here? Eh, get some one buys in there. This is a, a two by six right here, and that's pretty long. So this two by six, I could probably uh, double it up and get uh, you know have uh, two of them next to each other to get a board. Uh, let's see how long is that one? That one? Oh yeah, I could totally get. I could cut that up into four pieces. That would give me another two steps. So if I can get two steps out of this and two steps out of that, that would that would at least pretty much get me to where I need to uh, to be on this thing. Uh, the other uh, part of this that I'm going to need is some kind of a runner on the side, something that's going to hold all the steps together. And for that, maybe we need to go down to this other pile down here. This. This is the firewood that's going to be uh, split next spring and put up into, into that door right there. For now, it's just waiting its turn. All right, we've got a fair bit of uh, material down here. Uh, we've got a lumber mill going, and this is all like the crap stuff that, you know, it, it's just not strong enough or, or high quality enough to be used for actual lumber. But there's still good stuff in here, like this piece right on top. That's looking fine for a side so that this could be a runner on the side that's the piece that goes uh, to, uh, on the side of the steps and you know honestly this one over here looks pretty good looks pretty good too and if I'm unsure about them I can just like double them up or something like that uh, you know I, I add some extra uh, strength to it afterwards so I think we got the basic pieces that we need so I'm gonna come back over here and, uh, and get all the materials that we're gonna need to use for uh, for tools, I've just got a, uh, a hand saw, a hand drill, and I've got some two and a half and three and a half inch screws. And the reason I want to use screws for this is because uh, this whole thing's going to get dismantled, and um, you know I want to just be able to pull all the screws out, and then I'll use the screws for something else permanent later on. All right. So first step is uh, we got to get into this this pile here and uh, find out exactly how many steps. We're really gonna have here. Yeah, I think this boat, as critical as it is that this boat is here right now, I think I can probably deal without this boat being here, so I'm just gonna move it out of the way. All right. Uh, that there is my boy's boat, and uh, what I like about it is it's so light compared to mine. Right. It's important to stay hydrated. So I, I gave myself a treat with some Earl Grey tea this morning. Usually I try to do green tea. But today I was all about Earl Grey. You know, actually this is not, this one's not bad either. This one's got some punky junk in the back, but this could, I think it's got some strength to it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's some decent strength in this thing here. So that, that could be a step all by itself. And, this here, this could just be used as bracing later on. Like I said, if those runners on the side, we want to get them a little stronger. This could be a nice strong runner also, right there. There's a lot of good material here. Eventually, this is all just going to be firewood. Okay, so uh, this is going to be our first step. And 
to determine uh, how wide the steps are going to be, what I want to do first is uh, figure out there's something crawling around behind me. Uh, figure out uh, you know how many pieces I can get out of this. So if I go right up to the rot stuff, I've got 70 inches here. So well, if I did 20 inch steps, I could get three right out of this. More, well, they could even be bigger than 20 inches. So do I want to do that? So I'm just going to look at it. 20 inches. That for a step. That's a little on the narrow side, but I could actually make them a little bit bigger than 20 inches. Let's see. What's the back side look like? Okay, so this one gets pretty rotted up through here. So I'm actually just going to look at the, the lousy side and make my decisions based on that. So this thing ends functionally right around there. So how many inches do I got? Okay. Well, I've got about 66 inches. I'm just rounding it to 66 because I know that's easy to divide by three. So that is uh, 22 inches each. So it's almost, it's almost two feet wide. That's not bad for a step. I think I could do that. So that would give me three steps just out of this one right here. Um, there's one tool that I did not get that I think I'm going to actually grab for myself. And that is a, uh, uh, a square for making uh, square angles. So instead of you guys sitting here waiting for me, I'm going to stop the camera and start it up when I get my square. Okay, and we're back. I got two squares here. Um, I think they're I think they're both just called spares. I think this is called a, a speed square, and this one's nice because it's got this uh, this little edge on it, so you can put it right up on the on the edge of a piece of wood, and it'll give you a nice 90 degree angle. Right there. I'm not sure if you can see that right there. It'll just it'll uh, set itself up, so you don't have to do what you do with this square and kind of feel the edges and, and make sure that it's all lined up on, on one side. Um, I would normally want to use this whenever I could, but this is a larger piece of wood, bigger than this one, so uh, I think I'm going to be using the big, uh, the big square. So uh, first, I will start at one end and just square it off. And I'm just feeling along this edge, making sure it's parallel there, and then make my line uh, to square off this corner first. Now, uh, the saw that I'm going to be using is uh, this little battery-operated one. Uh, this wood is really wet, and it's, it's kind of difficult getting uh, the saw to go through wet wood a lot of the time. I don't need all this stuff up here. I think it's going to be my work surface, so the more I can clear off, the better. There we go. Uh, it's a little bit hard getting uh, this thing through wet wood, um, just because as the wood gets cut, yeah, because it's wet, it's kind of trying to, trying to constantly expand and swell up like a swollen sponge. So it kind of binds up with the blade. Uh, so one thing that I, I will tend to do is try to uh, pull this, uh, this guide or this uh, guard uh, back. And I've got a little uh, clip for holding that up. And I find that's pretty uh, useful, especially if you're going to go into something at an angle. When you're trying to go into an a something at an angle, sometimes this will kind of... Um, It'll gum you up and, and make you go crooked. So if you open this thing up and then use the, uh, the clamp to just hold it in place, uh, it, it can tend to make it just go through a little bit uh, straighter, uh, which is especially useful uh, in this circumstance because it's trying to uh, uh, jam up the whole time. So I'm uh, first going to start by uh, just uh, squaring up the corner, uh, the edge here, the end. takes multiple passes because it's wet and, and also you see me kind of kicking it up that's because it's uh it's wet and I'm trying to have less of the blade in the wood okay well there we go so now we're going to take our first measurement on our stair we said that we we're going to make them uh 22 inches wide let's work on right now. so we're going to go out 22 inches a little mark. Now if I was going to be precise with this, on the, the side that I measured, uh, that I want to be to exactly 22 inches. And uh, to the far side, because the blades have a thickness, you want to be uh, cutting uh, to the outside edge of the line you make. So what I would do is, after I made my mark, I'd make a little X 
to the scrap side. For this, it doesn't really matter because this isn't supposed to be beautiful, uh, but it's a, a good habit to be in when you make a mark, put an X on the scrap side so you know which side you want your, uh, your blade's thickness to be on. All right, so I'm squaring this up, looking at my mark, making my line, and we're going to cut our first actual piece of uh, firewood. Well, not firewood, actually. I was thinking ahead. Our first actual piece of carpentry wood. But I was thinking 22 inches is nice because when this does turn into firewood, 22 inches can fit into my, my wood stove. <laughs> so uh, the fact that these aren't longer steps uh, makes it so I have a little less work later on when I'm going to uh, turn these into their, their next purpose, which is to burn them. So I did the top layer uh, and just kind of uh, kicked it up a little because again, this wood's wet and it's hard to get through. There we go. So here's our actual first step. I think that's going to make a really nice step. That's one of the reasons, by the way, I oftentimes it might sound scatterbrained in some of my videos is that uh, I'll be working on, on step one, but I'm kind of, my brain is thinking about step five, <laughs> you know, way up in the future. and. Um, you know, for that reason, sometimes I get a little bit, uh, 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 well, I'm doing it right now, <laughs> having words scrambled in my head. Um, because what I was thinking of while I was talking about that is uh, whether I want to uh, make a new mark, 22, and, uh, uh, 22 inches, or if I want to just take this and use it as a template and uh, save myself some time that way. Uh, if you want really precise uh, measurements, it's usually best to remeasure it every time, but you can do a template also. And I'm going to do it on this one because precision isn't all that important. Although it's important that I use this as the template every time so I don't uh, make a copy and then use this as the template next time because any errors will keep compounding and compounding and compounding. So this will be my template for all steps that follow. All right, and we're cutting it. Binding up there. Try again. Once you cut through enough of it, you can kind of bend the wood enough that it can open it up and let the saw get through there. All right, so we're going to do one more step. I'm just going to come around and make sure the shot is okay. You guys seem a little far away. Guess we'll kind of be somewhere, somewhere in there should be good. All right. And because I'm shattering my mouth off, I need to have a drink. All right, third step. I might end up making this whole thing kind of a hybrid of, of wooden steps and maybe some of it will be stone steps. Again, I don't want to put a lot of effort into this because this is very temporary. I'm going to flip this over. This side is too crappy to even draw a pencil line on. One thing that we'll need to be concerned about while we do this is because this board is so rotted out, uh, the screws can kind of break right through it. So I, I think I might, at least for this one, put some secondary support under this step just to make sure that it doesn't fall apart while I'm walking on it. All right, here we go. Again, having to kick that saw way up so I'm not going so deep into the wood because it's having trouble with this wet wood. Right, try again. If the wood's dry, you don't have to do this all this all these times. Any wood that you get at the hardware store is not going to have this problem. All right, so that is three of those. This is firewood for the future. Put that right there. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is kind of figure out: Do I need more? Do I need more steps? I do have other options for steps here. Uh, 
So maybe what I want to do is I want to cut my my uh, runner boards on the side, the side pieces, cut them, get a sense of how big those are, and uh, perhaps get those attached, and then I can start sticking stairs in. So to do that, we got to go down and grab uh, some of those pieces of wood that I identified earlier. Um, I can't bring you guys down with me because I can't carry both them back and you guys in the same thing. So I'm going to have to turn the camera off and I'll bring those back. Okay, I was able to grab those two boards. Those are these right here. These are the ones that are going to be diagonals. While I was down there, I found this other board, which uh, I think would be, make a really good uh, couple of steps also. It's, uh, it's got this uh, you know, rounded uh, backside, but uh, what's there on the top is nice and flat and it's really thick and it feels like a really strong board. So I could get at least two more steps out of this, which gives me five steps. And while I, you know, I know I need more than three and I probably need more than four, I think five will do me just fine. So when I need to, I can get into that and uh, you know, get my last steps out of there. Again, you see how this is all just being kind of created by you know, what I find, you know, what my needs are, what my available resources are, and kind of bring those two together in a way that uh, you know, can uh, you know, make the best of what we have. Um, and I'm also trying to make it so I'm not working too, too much because all of this stuff is gonna get broken down in the future. All right, so next thing I gotta do is uh, figure out uh, what kind of angles are gonna be on, the, uh, on these guys because uh, they're gonna be kind of trapezoid shaped. Uh, they're gonna uh, come up in this direction and then have an angle cut so they can uh, you know, touch up against this surface. And then when they get to the, the ground, they're gonna have to be uh, you know, supported on, uh, on the ground with something as well. And it'll probably have some kind of a horizontal cut on it. So uh, the first step in that, I guess, would be to just kind of eyeball what looks like a good angle for uh, walking upstairs. I'm, you know, I'm honestly, I'm just gonna go with 45 degrees because uh, you know, that's a great angle. <laughs> For doing steps. So I'm just going to do a 45 degree angle cut on the end of one of these. This one's got kind of a crappier end so uh, I'm going to start on the on the far side and uh, uh, yeah, just do the best I can uh, from here. Now uh, 45 degrees whoops, uh, 45 degrees is a little hard to measure uh, when you have a uh, uh, you know, piece of wood that doesn't have any straight, <laughs> straight lines on it because it's just a raw cut uh, piece of uh, slab here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and kind of eyeball this to create some kind of like a, a straight line that goes down along the side here. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just sighting along this and making sure I can, it actually, you know, goes the length of the board. And I'm going to make a, just sort of a, a temporary 90 degree mark right here. Oh, actually, you know, there's another way of doing this right now. So I can just uh, use the measurements on the side of this. This thing goes from zero to about 10 inches here. So I'm gonna make a mark at 10 right there. I'm gonna go down this side, make another mark at 10. And if I connect those two lines, that'll be a 45 degree angle. There we go. All right, this one is thinner, so it's gonna be a lot easier to cut. Uh, because I'm going into the, uh, instead of going perpendicular into the side, I'm kind of coming in at an angle. This is a, a perfect time where you really want to have this guard pulled up and out of your way. If you don't have a clamp, you can kind of hold it up with your fingers, but then you're, you're down one hand. Uh, and if you need to hold anything else or steady the board um, or anything, you know, you're not able to do that. So I, I just love having the clamp on here. All right, let's get it nice and flat. And here we go. See what I mean? A lot easier with it being uh, thinner. Okay, cool. Um, next, because the ground here is—it's not uh, consistent. It's it, you know it's higher here and lower down here. Uh, these runners are not going to be the same length. Uh, the one on this side is going to be able to extend further before it hits the ground. Although what I could also do is just kind of block up the ground, and that might be the most sensible uh, way to address this. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna use this one temporarily. I'm gonna put it on the ground and uh, I'm just gonna run it up to the side here. And I'm gonna slide it in and out until the height of this side. Can you even see me over here? Let me make sure, I'm gonna make sure you can see me. All right, yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one, put it up to this wall, 
and slide it closer or further away so that the height of it you know ends up somewhere right around here because the idea is that I want to have the, the stairs kind of finish somewhere around this area um, I'll just to give you a sense of what I'm planning here is to do this you know, I don't want the stairs going way up to here and then I have to like jump down into it so this is gonna pull back a little and Somewhere like that, you know, these, these steps are kind of getting in my way here. You guys are beautiful. I love you, but I don't want you there right now. Okay. So that looks about, about flat on the ground there. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. This is a little bit high here, so I'm going to pull it in. And yeah, something like that would be fine because then the last step can be here. There'll be a little step up from there. So I'm going to take my pencil which I left over there. Um, I guess what I'm gonna do instead is, uh, if I can get anything sharp and just gouge this, or I'll just keep my finger on it. I guess I wanna end it right around here. This is gonna be where it's gonna stop, right around there, okay. I'm just gonna put my thumb on it, and make sure I don't lose my thumb placement. Again, if this needed to be more precise, this would not work, but it doesn't, okay. So I've got a mark now where my thumb had been, and this is gonna cut back in this direction. I wanna just make a temporary mark of that this way so I don't accidentally forget and have it go in the other direction. I'm gonna adjust you guys a little if we need to. Let's see, no, I guess we're, we're kinda still good. Kinda still good there. All right, so we got one, one little challenge here is uh, I need to, uh, I need to kinda transfer this angle so that it's perpendicular to the earlier one that we did. Again, I, I guess it's not that super critical. Um, the idea being that you want, uh, you know, this this uh, on the bottom and the one on the top to be uh, perpendicular to each other. And I can't reference it off this edge because it's just a wonky, like wavy side of the tree kind of edge. Um, a couple different ways that I could do that, but I, I think the way I'm probably gonna probably gonna go about it is to just not worry about it and. Uh, and uh, just eyeball it. <laughs> I think it's honestly the way that I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. So um, let's proceed. Again, if this thing really mattered that much, I'd uh, I'd worry more about it. But I'm not gonna worry about it. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this along the way I did before, at about the right length, right there. And uh, this one goes from eight inches to eight inches right there, and I'll connect the dots. And that'll give me a roughly 45 degree angle. And this is one of those circumstances where you're kind of um, uh, throttling your level of quality based on what the needs are. It really doesn't have to be that precise. If it did, I absolutely would uh, Make sure it was done more precisely, but it doesn't need to be, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it and not gonna lose sleep over it. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna run right through this cut. And this is one of those circumstances where I really like to have my hand free because I need to hold up this piece of the board so it doesn't just collapse. trying to bind up on there. Let's just try to hold it open. Yeah. As you're cutting them, as you can kind of like bend them a little bit, not too much because then they'll splinter, but if you can bend them a little bit, it can uh, make it so that they will uh, not bite on your saw so much. All right, so uh, let's just check this in there. See if it looks good, it looks approximately correct. As you can tell, we're gonna have to end up getting rid of a lot of these cinder blocks. All right, yeah, I'll buy that. Something like that for our steps. That works for me. You know, although I, I think I, I would have preferred it was a little higher, so I guess what we'll do is we'll just, we'll set the bottom on some cinder blocks and the whole thing will just jack up a little like that. And that'll, be, yeah, that'll be great. Just like that. So uh, now what I wanna do, I just wanna make a copy of this thing. So set it down. 
Take this one, this is the crappy end. So we'll start at the other end. And here all you gotta do is just lay this down and, uh, and trace. All right, something like that. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, label the ends, top and bottom. Oop, I broke my pencil. Well, I'm gonna have to sharpen that pencil. And we're back. Uh, the thought of the also crossed my mind they could have gotten just a real carpenter's pencil because they're not as prone to breaking, but uh, um, I don't know where I'm, any of my carpenter's pencils are. <laughs> I've got a bunch of unsharpened ones, but I've never bought a sharpener for them. All right, so anyway, got that side done. And, and this side done here. Now I, I'm gonna label uh, the top and bottom of these just so that we, we know to, to match them. I'm just gonna put a, a T here and a B on the bottom. I could just label one of them, but uh, I'm gonna be anal about it. All right, and uh, got a T here and a B there. And more hydration. Honestly, uh, it's all the talking. It's not, it's not particularly hot or sweaty out today. It's talking, it's the hydration required. All right, and here we go with those cuts. This should go pretty easy again because it's a thin board. that easy but we're through anyway yeah using raw cut lumber is uh, it's, uh it's, a bit, it's a bit of a thing if you don't if you don't have the time or inclination to let it fully dry it's, it's a lot harder to cut through it a lot harder right, here we go next one not loving me. Another way of doing this instead of just going through is to take it and rotate the saw down while it's running and you can kind of plunge in. I'm not sure if there's safety issues with that but it can make it so that you don't have to deal with as much of this biting. Uh, it's also a way of just starting a cut in the middle of a board uh, if you don't want to cut in from the edge. I think I'm going to do that on this one because I can see this one just pinching down on the board. Here we go. So I'm lining up my tip and lining up the blade and I'm going to pivot right on this front edge here. Doing that, it's biting. Me. Oh, come on, yo. There we go. Firewood. Uh, the only things that are remaining is maybe a couple extra steps, um, whatever kind of platform we're going to need underneath. And um, I honestly think I want to reinforce the sides of these um, these runners because uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm not. Sure. This looks pretty good on this side, but you know, it's, there's only like that much actual wood, and all this outside stuff is like punky sap wood. So I think I'm going to put some uh, uh, some strength on the outside. That'll be really easy. But um, and the other thing is to move this this pile of blocks because they're just going to start being in the way at some point. So uh, what do we do first? Maybe move the pile of blocks. I guess. Yeah, I think I got to move the pile of blocks. I can't. I can't put things up to the uh, up to the wall. Otherwise, now I'm starting to notice one one issue that I'm going to have, and that uh, regards to the width of the stairs. We're doing 22 inches. Again, I, you know, these are those things I, I don't I don't think fully through. We're going to do 22 inches, which is much more narrow than this. So our our are they called runners or stringers? I forget what they're called. The, the diagonal things. Those are going to be closer together than the, the door here. So, it makes me think that those need to kind of be below the door or they'd have to like kind of get notched and, uh, and hook into this. Uh, either one of those situations could work. I think I'd rather they were a little higher so the step isn't so, 
so big of a jump. I'm just wondering like which one is going to be like the least amount of effort uh, from, from my perspective. Because again, these are all just temporary stuff. I think probably uh, the best way to do it would be to make it so that they're not, they're not centered on the door. One of them will be out here. One of them will uh, be kind of in the middle and that one will get notched. That'll actually make it a, a little bit more supported because it'll be resting on this little step here. Um, I think that's probably, that's probably the way to go with it. Uh, so yeah, first step here is just move all these, these bricks out of the way. Uh, put the steps here. This is such a big part of, of any construction, honestly, is like move stuff to a place <laughs> and then move it off somewhere else. What I'm, I, the only reason I'm hesitating at all is I'm wondering like, is there a way of moving these that is going to make it easier for me later? And I think there is, again, coming back to that width issue. I don't think I have to move them completely out of here. 22 inches, yeah, 22 inches brings me to here. So my steps are going to be here, which means I can leave all the bricks on this side uh, without having to move them. So I can, uh, I can keep all of those. Um, how, how high was this going to be? That's the top. You're going to get these like up like this or something, right? So the bottom step is going to be down on these guys anyway. So that's the bottom step. You can see my brain working here. I'm just trying to minimize how much work I gotta do. <laughs> so I, I don't have to move any of these and I don't have to move anything that's over here. So I can take these and make myself a bottom step that's bigger. Now these are eight inch and these are six inch ones. That's not gonna fly. So I, I've got to, oh, these are eight inches here also. Okay, I need to take the eight inch ones and put them together for the bottom step so it's a consistent size. I mean, that'd be kind of weird otherwise. All right, eight inch step. Eight inch step. Now if I need, I'll probably put some more cinder blocks in there as well, although yeah, the runner's gonna be there. Maybe I'll end up stacking them here. Just trying to figure it out. These gotta get out of the way so they can go here. And how else can I do this? I gotta make sure that I uh, am not. Yeah, well, let's get this one out of the way. As long as you do that, the problem's solved, I guess. Let's take this, put it in there. Take that. Oh, if I had, if I had more eight-inch ones. Is this an eight-inch one? This is an eight-inch one. Okay. The nice thing about the eight-inch ones is that two of them equal the height of a 16 inch block. If you're using the six inch ones, you, you stack two of them, you get 12 inches. Not exactly, because they're, they're actually a little bit under six inches, but uh, two eighths equals one, uh, one lengthwise. So that, that is kind of a nice part. All right, cool, so we've got this. This will be the first step, and then pop, 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 pop. You're gonna go up through there. Uh, let's just check this. All right. Uh, looks like it wants to come a little bit closer. I gotta move this one too. Actually, both of these gotta move. Although, you know what? I can just stack them right here. They're not gonna be in the way there. Yeah, that might be in the way later, but we'll, we'll figure it out as we get to it. All right. So, top, bottom. Okay. I'm getting some more issues with the six inch, eight inch thing. It's just, it's just because this is a like a crazy pile of mixed brick here. I need more support here. So I gotta pull this and replace it with an eight, which means I gotta pull one of my nice doubled up ones here. You know, I'll just suck it up, who cares? Okay, so you are gonna go in here. Are you guys all uh, already all humming the uh, Tetris music <laughs> right now? It feels like I'm playing, uh, playing Tetris right now. All right, and then you go here and we can't take advantage of any of that, but if I take this and kind of put it across there, I can at least tie these two piles together a little for safety. And let's see, put it back up. All right, cool. So 
that's what's up with that. It looks like this one here, this block here is going to be in the way. I mean, honestly, God, I can just, I can throw some of these on the ground. I just, every time you throw something on the ground, you know you're going to have to pick it up again later. So I'm trying to avoid throwing uh, anything on the ground that I can avoid uh, doing. Uh, I, I am going to want some more down here, ultimately, because it's going to be, you're going to have a step here, and then up, and then up, and then up, up, up like that. And where's my other, there it is. And I label them top and bottom, and this one will be like that. All right, cool. This is actually kind of sol solving some of these uh, issues for me. Uh, because this one here, you can see, it doesn't really, it's not going to engage with the wall. But I think that that will be fine because I, I just have to attach it to something that will act as a, a base. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do is uh, I'll attach like a block to it here. Uh, and maybe on both sides, that will, uh, just on one side. Uh, I'll attach a block to it, and that block will act like a, like a finger to hold on. Plus, it's going to be bound to this other guy with um, uh, the, all the steps. This side will be supported, and I can make some supports down on the side over here as well, because uh, I'm going to have this stack of cinder blocks out here, and I can put some little fingers to, uh, on the side. We'll, we'll get into that later. But, uh, you know, for a temporary situation, I think this will be totally fine. This is going to fit in just like that. I'm going to bring you guys a little closer so you can see it. Because this is, I'm starting to be able to visualize this now. This is how I do a lot of my building, like I said, is, uh, you know, it's not, I don't have a full plan. It's kind of like, see what you got and see how it goes. All right, let's just kind of put that back like that. All right, cool, cool. So you can see the beginning of the steps right here. And uh, structurally, this one has really good support up there. It was gonna once we, uh, you know, get the pads in. And it's gonna have totally good support down on the bottom here. This one has good support at the bottom, but up at the top, it's not, you know, it's not gonna have great support. So what I'm thinking is what I was trying to describe earlier is I'll just get a block here that will uh, attach to the side. We'll screw it in from the other side and that will act to kind of hold on to this side. And also like just all coming down the side here, I can put another block right here that'll act to kind of grab on to, to that piece. So all that stuff together, that's gonna work out totally fine. And the next step is to start locating where the steps are gonna go on this, uh, on this staircase. So we're gonna start with this. And uh, how many steps do we really need? Well, let's just kind of eyeball them. Uh, one's going to be like here. Like this is going up. And then I guess there'd be another one kind of around there. And well, you know, three steps is going to. Three steps is looking pretty good, actually. I was thinking that I was going to want to have more than that. I'm actually. I'm feeling pretty good about just having three steps. All right, cool. Because uh, the the uh, the deck only comes to about here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that over there. Uh, the deck only comes is only about this height. So this thing here is kind of flush with the deck. I'm going to take a measurement of uh, that angle. Yeah. It's about three inches below this point is where the deck is. So this step could actually even be lower down over here uh, we're going to take actual measurements in a little bit but this is just sort of eyeballing it and looking like oh does that look like a legitimate uh staircase and i'll, I'll get, give you guys a little view of it as well so well, you're looking at it like upside down but like th those are legitimate steps it's not like any kind of a huge reach or anything like that i think that's going to work out totally fine so what i got to do is just uh do the math on it so uh, I know that about three inches below here is the deck. Let me, let me double check that because uh, th you know these these boards are uh, not identical. So let's uh, let's actually get these guys in place. And this one's actually going to be on. Uh, there we go. I'm going to bring you guys back over here. This is a, this gets into that measure twice, cut once kind of thing. All right. I just want to make some marks about where, where the, the actual uh, heights of everything are going to be. Okay. Is that good? Okay. 
you got that. And this one's gonna be here. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna eyeball, make sure these are kind of lined up with each other, which they're not presently. What I'm doing, I'm just looking along the edges and making sure that the edges line up so that I know these are running parallel. Okay, this is their final position. In fact, I'm going to make some marks here so we can find this again in case I, I need to. I'm going to make a mark where this one touches the deck, right there, and I make a mark where this one is contacting the wall, right there. And I'm going to use this straight edge to, uh, to make a line that will correspond with the height of the deck inside, whoops, of the deck inside the, the woodshed. Because that, that way I know where to position the first step. So we got that line there. I wish this one would just stand up for a little while. I guess we're fine, it can fall. But in fact, it'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna make a, a mark that corresponds with the height of the deck here. Now, um, if I had a bubble level, that would be the ideal way of doing this. I'm just measuring it as perpendicular to the vertical here. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just sort of eyeballing where the steps are gonna be. All right, so now we know that that is kind of like the last step is there. So the step we have on here is gonna be below that. Okay. So we'll uh, get going with, with these steps now. We'll reposition you guys. You know, it would be pre pretty amazing as if there was like another camera operator uh, while I was doing this. I know some YouTubers, they've got someone that like shoots the video while they are working. And I do not have that. All right. So we've got to take, uh, we've got three steps. So that is going to divide it up into four sections. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got 42 inches, which is a great number because 42 is very easily divisible by, uh, by four. That'll give us uh, uh, half is uh, 21 and then half 21 is uh, um, 10 and a half. So each one of the steps is gonna be 10 and a half uh, inches from each other, you know, as the run goes. That doesn't mean that that's uh, how much difference in height they're gonna be, but, uh, but rather, uh, the diagonal, 10 and a half from each other. All right, so 10 and a half, and then 21 right there, and then 21 plus 10 and a half is 31 and, or 30, 31 and a half, yeah. Okay. There's somebody running around behind me right now. I'm not sure who it is. All right, and again, we want to have like a straight line uh, between all these. So what's the best way to do that is with a straight edge. I got nice straight edges back at the house, but I don't want to walk all the way back to the house. And I think this will work for a straight edge. The way to figure out whether something's a straight edge is to just look along it, and you're much better able to notice if there's a curve on it. It's kind of hard to see if there's a curve just looking at it like this. But if you look at it from the end, like right down, close one eye, you can really see uh, the wiggles in it. If you guys want to look at it with me together, what I'm noticing is that towards your end, it kind of curves off to your right a little bit. But uh, right up until about here or so, this is pretty straight. It's certainly straight enough for my purposes. So I'm gonna use that as a straight edge. Make some marks on here. Okay. So we've got all these marks where we're gonna put steps. And this is gonna be where the back corner of the steps are. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing is we got to make sure that these steps are all flat. 
because if they're not flat, it would kind of defeat the purpose of, uh, you know, having, um, you know, stairs at all. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd end up falling down it anyhow. So, uh, what's a good way of doing that? Again, it's difficult when you're kind of referencing off of all these weird, these weird edges. I guess the best way to do that would be how? Um, well, I, I, I can make I can make some perpendicular lines. I know that this is flat right here, that, that horizontal line that I made. So I can make a perpendicular coming down from there. This is going to be prone to having uh, accumulated errors, but I think it'll be fine for my purposes. So now what I'll do is I'll take a perpendicular off the perpendicular. You know, if I was going to do this for too many stairs, um, you know, eventually uh, I'd accumulate errors and it, things would, could potentially get pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, just kind of eyeballing it for, uh, you know, a couple steps, I'm feeling okay about. Because I've got all these lines on here, I want to put little X's where the step's going to be. One step's going to be here, one step's going to be here. Right. And we're going to measure another perpendicular off here to get this other step. That's coming down. This is the last step. All right, here we go. And making a little X where the step is going to be. And the purpose for that is that I made a I made a line. And does that does that line mean that the step is here, or does that mean the line of step is here? You want to know which side of the line uh, you want you intended to have uh, for your step. So uh, so that's why uh, so that's why you do the X on it. All right, so I've got a step here, here, and here. Uh, this is where the ground is. This is the upper uh, level where the um, uh, where the deck is. Um, next step would be to uh, you know start getting the uh, the screws into this. Um, normally, what I would do is uh, drill a few holes and then put the screws in from the back side. Uh, I'm not going to do that uh, just because I'm going to be lazy. What I'm going to do is instead of drilling holes, I'm just going to throw a screw in and then and then back the screw out. get these stairs in. Uh, I'm going to have the strongest part of the stair, I guess, uh, facing out because that's the edge that might tend to want to break off. Alright, and the way we're going to do this is, uh, how are we going to do this? Usually I'll kind of just rest it on the top and uh, look at it from the, below, uh, from the below or something like that. Get them kind of lined up. So I'm looking to line up with that that line I did earlier, and I want them to tuck back into the little corner that I made a note about. Come on, it'll be easier on the other ones once I have one one leg on here. Almost there. If it's too hard, what I can do is I can just start one screw in the on the side and then pivot it. But I got it. All right, so we got one in. I'm going to put more than a couple screws in these. All right, that one did not seat at all. That one just sort of went into some punky wood. All right, that one grabbed though. All right, uh, I, because that that was like such a non-grab, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another screw in right away. Yeah, I'll put it right in the middle. We can put a bunch in. I'm going to get all these screws back later. All right, there we go. So we got one step in, like that. And then the next one is going to go right here. Right, yeah, you can see this wood. You know, the screws aren't going to grab into that crap too great. All right, so next. This, that was it. Yeah, we definitely can use some more screws in here, and I think I'll put some supports under all these steps, just for safety. Alright, I'm lining up with my lines. That looks pretty good. Like that. And here we go. Again, the goal here is to do this with a minimum 
of resources and without wasting too much of my time and to be able to you know recoup all these materials later you know the wood will get used for firewood and the screws will get used for some ultimate project someday that won't just be a crap fest all right next Again, just lining it up with all my marks, which are kind of hard to see because they're drawn in some pretty crappy wood. That one's not going to suit too great. Ugh. Right. One more. Okay, so. We got three steps in. Flip it up. At this point, if this was really uh, good quality materials, you know, you would uh, be feeling like, oh, this is starting to feel nice and nice and rigid, the rugged, rugged, uh, rugged thing. And uh, you know, I'm not getting that feeling just because you know it's it's you know the junky materials. But what I'm going to be doing is essentially uh, what's a good uh, piece of wood to demo this. Uh, well. Just for now, what we're going to uh, do to support these steps afterwards is I'm going to take some scrap and screw it in underneath. So we're going to have this supporting the stairs. So even if the screws that are in there aren't holding it great, it's never going to like break through there. So I'm just going to get some short pieces of little scrap and we'll throw them under each step and that will be totally, totally fine. Next step is to put our, uh, our top on and the important thing here is to uh, is to make it so that these legs are going about the same length, so that they're touching the ground at the same same point. And I'm wondering what the best way to do that is. Again, because these are just wonky wonky pieces. Uh, I think I'm just going to eyeball it, to be honest. Right. I'm not sure if eyeballing is going to work. All right. I suppose what I could do is is get it actually I could get it actually up into place up there and I could screw it together while it's like up on the wall. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, what I will need to do is put a pad up on the top here though before I do that. Yeah, if I screw it if I screw it together while it's up there, it's just it's gonna guarantee that it'll actually actually fit. So here's the steps, and oops. let's take a peek. It's kind of nice to see it developing here. So you can see, you know, the first step there. It's all kind of coming together. You get the last step. It's not too big of a step. So uh, yeah, I think what we're going to do is just uh, attach it into place here. And then I'll, I'll slide the other board in. I will have to move some of these cinder blocks because I'm going to be drilling in from the side. You know, whatever. I can suck it up and move those. But, uh, yeah, that'll ensure that it's nice and, nice and uh, rigid while I'm working. What I need to do right now, though, is make a pad for here uh, so that it'll have something to connect with. So we need the pad not just because there's a, a gap here, but also because um, uh, we need to uh, attach this to this. And the best way to do that is to take a pad and attach the pad to the uh, the run of stairs, and then I'll take screws and attach the pad. So this won't directly attach the structure. This will attach to the pad, and then the pad attaches the structure. And I need some scrap for that. Um, three quarters of an inch would be ideal. I can deal with something that's a little thicker. Also, what do we got in this? Oh, well, we got these. This uh, this little bit that we uh, had cut out from earlier. If that can get put in there. Yeah, just uh, just cut that down. I don't even need a line for this, just eyeball it. There's my pad. Alright. So, um, well, same as we did before, get a couple of screws into this. 
work here for a sec. Alright, one, I think two ought to do it. You really want these in good wood though, because um, the whole stairwell is rested on them. So put the pad in here. Uh, for lining it up, it's nice to just uh, poke the screws through a little bit and then back them out. Okay, it's poked through, back it out. Poke through, back it out. All right, and then we can line up those with uh, this. And again, I'm making sure it's going into this section of good wood, not this crappy stuff. Do it. Secure. That's a nice feeling. It's like going from good wood into good wood, and uh, I can feel that one's nice and strong. All right, so back up. Oh, you know what? If I'm going to be putting those uh, those uh, supports underneath the steps, now's the time to do it because um, I don't have to work from like upside down. So let's do that now. I got my one and a half inch screws. I'm getting a little low on these. I bought another whole container of them, but I had trouble getting ones with Phillips head tops. Phillips head means the uh, the ones with the little X on the top. Uh, the X shape is called Phillips head. When it's just a straight line across, that's called standard. And there's lots of other different types of screws with like star shapes and things like that. And uh, I was only able to find the ones with like the star heads last time, which are fine, but um, I'd have to keep changing the, the bit in my, uh, in my drill, so. Uh, I got this too. This will be a lot better for uh, support because I can just keep chopping pieces off of it. So let's uh, get going. Each one of these just has to be a few inches. One. Alright, so I got two. One, two. Yeah, I'll chop the third one out too. And three. All right, so now all you gotta do is just, just screw them down. This will be really secure for these, uh, for these steps. This is, these aren't gonna be going anywhere. One. And making sure I'm going into the good wood. And this is what it's all about. It's, you know, it's about making the thing strong so it's gonna be safe, but you know, it's just being made out of, you know, junky materials. And honestly, if this was not in an outdoor environment where it is, you know, exposed to weather, you know, this actually would last a long time. You know, despite being made out of all these ugly, ugly materials. Again, trying to stay in the good wood. Beautiful. Whew. Yeah, it's nice and strong. All right. So now, yeah, you can feel these things are a lot more rigid with that next to them. All right. I'm gonna bring you guys around. So we got it positioned up next to the wall. The pad is up here. It's a little cockeyed, so I gotta get it nice and flush. Slide it down. Looking pretty, pretty flush to me. That good? Yeah, okay, cool. So with that, I just gotta uh, secure it in. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use three 
two and a half inch screws for this. I, you know, I, I could use a one and five eighths screws I was using for there, but uh, I think it'll just give it a little more strength. Really anchor it in. Ooh, nice and snug. And that was going through the not the best wood too, but I could feel it was, you know, there's enough good wood in there that it was working. Right, I think two screws would be enough, but I got a third in my hand and no big deal to add an extra screw. So we're gonna do one more on this side. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that, I could almost walk up that right now, except I'd rip the steps off, because <laughs> not supported yet. But uh, that is, uh, that's looking great. Okay, so next step is I gotta get rid of all these guys. I, I get, I'm, I'm thinking you guys might be getting lens flared. I'm gonna move you, because uh, I can see some lens flare happen in that lens there. The cinematographer in me is trained to see when the uh, lens is getting fla uh, flared out by there being sun in it. Let's uh, get you guys to a better position here. And we'll get rid of this mugwort, so you can see. All right. Two, uh, we gotta get rid of this stuff here. Uh, we might as well just begin with that. I think I do wanna, I wanna have some of these guys right in here. Oh, see, this is a, this is a great log for uh, the video that I did the other day about making stone steps, and I mentioned I had like really lousy packing sticks for it. This would be a really great packing stick. The diameter, it's like, I don't know, what's that, like two inches diameter, nice and flat. It's easy to hold on to in your hands. It's even got this little notch here. Um, so, I don't know, like, you know, for different holes and stuff like that. That's, a, that's what you're looking for when you want to pack dirt around, around stones. I don't need that today though. All right, so this area up front here, I think I am gonna add a little bit more bricks here. Just found one of these little red striped uh, newt, a lot of these guys starting to hibernate this time of year. I always feel bad disturbing them. So I'm going to put him somewhere where he's not going to get uh, disturbed again. Over there so you can try to make new accommodations for the winter. I do feel bad when I disturb them. Uh, yesterday uh, when I was uh, digging up a dirt pile for Phil, I, uh, I dug up a mouse that was hibernating. Um, in the past I've accidentally dug up mice while they were hibernating and uh, like severed them with the shovel, like I chopped one's head off. Cause you know, I was just digging into a pile of dirt and it went into the nest and cut the mouse in half. So uh, I try to be as careful as I can, you know, sometimes you gotta get a project done, but I I feel really awful about that. Cause you know, as a, as a you know, someone into prepping and preparedness, I really, uh, I really uh, empathize with the idea of, you know, what animals do to get ready for the winter. And the idea that I come along and destroy all that for them, you know, after they put all this work into it, it, it does bother me. So I, I try to, you know, whatever I can do to not have that be the case. But, you know, sometimes you, you got to get things done, too. But I do feel bad about it. The, the way they hibernate is the, the mouse kind of curls up, like, with its head down like this and its tail comes up over its head and kind of wraps around. Um, it, uh, it almost looks like a, like a, like a wound up, uh, wound, wind up toy or something like that. Cause like the, the tail's all wrapped around it. Okay, cool. So that was kind of holding that up a little bit. To my Let's get it out of there. I'm just gonna, now I'm not gonna temporarily put them there. They're gonna roll and rip into my shin. There we go, okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, well, ultimately, I think I can pack some of these back here. So I'm going to do that now while I'm able. It's easier to get them in there at the moment. So I can put the 8-inch one in there. And uh, this other 6-inch one, I'll just figure out something later. Okay, so I'm going to put the board up here now, just uh, right over here. You know, I, I said earlier that I didn't want to go and get a bubble level because it doesn't have to be that perfect. But at the moment, I'm wondering, do I want to get a bubble level? 
And I think the answer is still no. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. But I could put a bubble level on these steps and make them nice and nice and level, but I, it's totally fine without it. That'd just be insane if I went and I did that. Because what I can do is I can just put my head and eyeball them and make sure that they're kind of uh, matching um, that top surface there. It's fine, it's fine practice, don't worry about it. All right. Yeah, something like that. Oh, and you know what I'm gonna do? Why don't I, why don't I put my pencil in my pocket? That's what I'm always looking for. It. A lot of people are into wearing uh, carpenter's belts. My dad is, he's always making fun of me because I don't do it, but uh, eh, they, they got benefits, but uh, I don't know, I like being free. All right, so, so this stair has to be level and there it goes. So I am right now just gonna hold the board in place and make a line on it like that, okay. And then I'm gonna do the next one. And what I'm doing is I'm just eyeballing it to something I know on this structure is level. And I'm using that to get the level surface. All right, something like that. And last one. Gotta come up a bit. Okay, there we go. So now they got my lines drawn. I can do that thing with uh, you know, drilling holes through, or I think maybe I'll just do I just eyeball it? Nah, I'm not gonna eyeball it. Gonna put this in position, lift the stairs up where they need to be. I noticed the camera actually ran out of memory before I finished, so I finished up the thing uh, with the camera thinking it was rolling, but it's not. I'm just going to show you what was uh, was left because it wasn't actually that much. Where we left things off, I was screwing in these uh, these steps here, and you'd see me do the other one. So I mean, pretty basic. You just did three uh, three screws in each one. I mimicked what I did on the other side by putting these uh, these supports underneath to support the stairs, and that's gonna make them really, really uh, sturdy. And the last thing that I did uh, was uh, to make this little bracket up here, and this was to attach this, uh, this side of the stairs to the actual structure. And the reason for that is if this thing were to slid out, because if I didn't attach it there, the only, the only attachment point would be right here, and it could pivot on that, the whole stair, uh, could like slide, you know, pivot one way or the other around that radius point, and uh, that would be kind of bad if uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this part of it uh, slid off of the the bricks below would completely destabilize it and everything. So, uh, you know, for that and just the reason you don't want your stairs sliding around, I uh, attached uh, th this little connection point. I started by attaching this piece of scrap to the side here with a couple of screws. And once that was on there, I took this piece of scrap and put it down on the deck, put two screws in there. And then from the back side, I attached with two screws through here, this piece to that piece. So that ties, this is tied to this and this is tied to that. And that makes it very, very stable. So the whole project came out really well. Uh, I did not have to sacrifice uh, structural stability um, in the entire process. Uh, I think the only thing that I might add, and I'll just throw you guys back on the tripod for this, there's only one other thing that I might add. Well, one and a half. <laughs> one and a half things I might add. Um, one of them is, uh, I mentioned that these uh, stringers, or I forget what these are called, these diagonal boards, uh, I mentioned that there's not a ton of awesome wood in here, so there is a chance there could be a crack in there. So what I think I might might do is add an extra piece. In fact, I got one right over here. 
I might add an extra piece of wood uh, just onto the side. This is a little long, I have to cut it down. But onto the side like that, uh, and on the other side as well, uh, and screw this in here to just, uh, it's kind of like a splint uh, to protect the bone from breaking. You know, so if you were gonna put like, uh, you know, if you're worried that you're gonna break your, uh, the, the bone in your leg, if you put a bunch of structure around it uh, ahead of time, it would you know, protect you from uh, breaking. It's kind of like an exoskeleton that you'd be putting on you. So I'd be adding a little bit of extra little splints to just strengthen the thing. So that's something I might do. Um, I'll probably end up doing that. I mean, it'll, it'll take like three screws and a couple pieces of scrap. So it'll be done in like three minutes. And the only other thing I might do is add a railing. Uh, if I were to take a, a piece like this and then just get another uh, piece on top, and that would give me a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, something to hold on to while I come down the steps holding a bunch of um, uh, logs. I usually am going to be carrying them in my right hand, so I wonder if I want to put the railing on the left hand side. Maybe right over here would be where I could put the railing so I can grab it. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% certain whether I want to do that or not. Um, maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> That's the great thing about uh, you know, building with this type of you know, material is it, you know, you don't really have to plan it out because you're kind of making it up as you go along. Uh, if you see deficiencies as you go, you can address them, uh, you know, on the fly. And as long as you kind of have the basic idea of the fundamentals of what you're doing about what constitutes like a strong uh, board and, you know, what, what constitutes, you know, a good connection, like uh, the connection between these stairs and the, whatever the hell this diagonal board is called on the side, because I was putting the, the screws in and I was sensing that it was going into a lot of this kind of not so great wood in there, I was able to, uh, you know, adapt my approach by understanding that the primary force on these, uh, these steps is going to be downwards. So if I put a block on the bottom uh, to, to support it, it takes something that is a little bit tenuous, like maybe, you know, the, the, the screws could kind of like bend or rip out, you know, depending on, you know, how quality uh, the wood is in there. And it turns it into something that, you know, you, the, the, steel would have, the steel would have to completely disintegrate in order to fall um, you know, uh, uh, through the, the little supports that I put on there. So it's a great way to kind of uh, you know, approach things in that you aren't using materials that cost a lot of money. It's just you know, crap that's uh, kicking around. And uh, again, like you can address little um, issues on the fly. Another thing that I addressed on the fly was you know, the fact that I wanted to do 22 inch steps so that I could get three steps out of that one nice board. Uh, and that, that shrunk this whole thing, uh, so I kind of had to come up with, with this little bracket here uh, to attach instead of attaching this the way that I did the other one over there. But, you know, it, in retrospect, it worked out even better because this way I was able to sit them straight down on the brick uh, surface here. And if I'd made it the full le uh, width, then I would have had to take this whole uh, brick surface and extend it out all over here and level the ground and everything to create a nice uh, support for it. And also with the shorter steps, uh, you know, there's less chance of the step breaking. Uh, you know, the, the longer the board is, uh, you know, the more bowing you're gonna get in it uh, as you're putting, uh, putting weight on that board. So uh, I hope you found this video, uh, you know, helpful and useful and most of, most of all, inspiring. You know, if you're gonna be, uh, if you'd like to do big projects, Doing small projects like this is a great way of kind of familiarizing yourself with the materials, getting a sense of what works and what doesn't work. You, if you do something like this, you have to understand, you know, maybe some of your uh, initial projects, they don't work out very well. You know, you put them together and you're like, oh, this is kind of wiggly in this way, uh, you know, or, or that way. And then, you know, you're going to learn about like, you know, doing cross bracing. And if I put this kind of diagonal piece and create this triangle here, it's going to take this thing that was kind of wiggly and it's going to really rigidify it. You're going to really feel all that kind of stuff out. So you got to understand there's going to be some error in with your trial, but there's nothing wrong with that because that's one of the great ways that we have of learning is just trying things out see what sticks see what doesn't and you know adapting from there adaptation and that's it <laughs> i hope you found this video uh like i said inspiring that's it and thanks for watching hey youtube preppers here's another video that you might enjoy but before you click on it i wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen they help to support the work that i do here over at patreon.com if you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list the link's below